everybody for win, but not everybody could get one grocery bag. Minister Dolores Valderramas Garcia explains the slender support for lean times. And $10 million for the old Mirab building? Well, that's what the PUC is paying for a building, which also happens to be owned by the family of a former PUC commissioner. Tonight, you'll hear Mike Bonara explain how he feels the PUC got value for money. Plus, we'll have coverage of the second day of the National Morning for Dame Manita. Also, Cuba's Henry Reeves Medical Brigade leaves Belize tomorrow. How will Belize cope on the COVID front line without them? Details of these and all the stories in our newscast for tonight, Tuesday, June 19, 2021. That's January 19, 2021. Good evening. With your news, I'm Indira Craig. For hydration, when the choice is yours, choose the brand you have always trusted. Crystal water, taste you can trust. If you have been directly exposed to the new coronavirus or have a history of travel in infected populated areas, it is recommended that you self-isolate. Identify room to be used to self-isolate and limit contact with healthy persons. Keep away from older persons and persons who have medical conditions that affects their immune system. Monitor for any cold or flu-like symptom for up to 21 days and wash hands frequently with soap and water. If you become seriously ill, call your healthcare provider or 0800-664-2273 for guidance. A health and wellness message from your Ministry of Health. In partnership with the British High Commission. Caused the intense flooding overnight in the western and Babe. southern parts of the country. Uh, yeah. Do we need to renew the insurance policy? The insurance policy. Highway were impassable. Oh, let me check. Renew your policies, file a claim, and even send us a message using RFNG online. Now we're good. It says we're covered. Okay, great. It pays to get it right with RFNG Insurance, a rogue group company. Ever imagined what it would be like to go through a pandemic till the year 2020? At the moment, the entire world is going through an economic crisis, leaving many people affected both financially and emotionally. My name is Tuhani Carrillo. I am from Trinidad Government School and I am in Standard 6. What inspired me to write the essay was, apart from the prize being very attractive, I thought, how could this benefit other people, not only me? And this is like my second home, so I feel like maybe if I could win the essay competition, I could repay the school in a very positive manner. It's a blessing for our school, actually. So we feel that this money, we're going to invest it in the school, in printing packages, actually, we do need assistance right now. And also we will revamp our bathrooms that are in dire need of some fixing. I am very grateful and thankful for them giving people this opportunity to you know, win a little prize, but also making it in a very educational form. We're very thankful to BEL for sponsoring the essay competition. It's a way of reaching out to our students who are out of school. And again, also it is very rewarding for them, for the students and for the school. Compliments of the season, yes. girl. Yes, girl. So for you, they do girl, I'm here, Gary, girl, let go. Girl, not too bad, you know. That's six months now, so we barely feel it. 
And you, you're the no big Christmas shopping though. Yes, girl. You know every year the whole family come over to my house, lock them out to feed. And Carl, he even while we buy a new sofa set. I don't know who we're gonna try him first. <laughs> And you, you don't do your big Christmas shopping? No, girl, no kind of big shopping this year. I totally understand. Anyways, make I try to come out of this place. Bye. Not forget your tax receipt. Receipt? For the liberty thing? It no matter for the sake of accountability. We have to know that for we tax money, the go where it's supposed to go. You don't know, tax is important for the economy of every country. Taxes help pay for education, streets, and other government projects like grocery bag will benefit all of we. And you never know when the economy pick up back, maybe Gary could even get back his job. You know, you're right. It's that time of year again. And whether you're buying gifts for loved ones, shopping for new furniture and appliances, or simply doing business as usual, the Belize Tax Service Department would like to remind you to always ask for a tax receipt with every purchase. Let us all do our part to ensure the further growth of Belize. Together we build our country, your contribution, our development. You have a neighbor throwing a party? Do you know of anyone holding a social event? Have you seen people not following protocols set in place to reduce the spread of COVID-19? If so, report them immediately. Use Smart or BTL and call 0800 Parties. That's 0800-727-8432. Our COVID-19 hotlines are available 24-7. These violators are putting your health and everyone you love at risk. Call our COVID-19 hotlines and report all violators. This message was brought to you by the Belize Police Department. Everybody can get grocery bags, or at least that's what the Minister of Human Development said today. Dolores Valderamas Garcia lamented that Simply put, the government is broke and there are only limited resources to carry out the food assistance program. And limited resources translate into limited beneficiaries. The grocery bag program, formerly known as the pantry program, was put on pause back in November, shortly after the PUP took office. Minister Balderamas Garcia said that they needed to reconfigure the program, which left a lot of dependents out in the cold. The program restarted on December 15th, but this was brief and was put on yet another indefinite pause. Now, the minister is hoping to resume distribution next week, but as you just heard, not every previous beneficiary will be receiving this time around. What is happening is that we are in the process of vetting the applications. Um, I do have to point out though that the money remaining up until the end of the financial year is very limited. So we have, we have a tremendous um, desire, a tremendous wish on the part of the Belizean people to participate because things are hard. But I, I don't want to give bad news, but I do have to say that the number of persons that we may be able to help will be limited, you know. But government is committed with the limited resources that we have left. Um, we are committed to seeing it through until the end of the financial year. But as you know, we merged the, um, the, the former pantry and grocery bag, we merged it with the COVID food assistance. So it is one food assistance program and um and that is what we will we will roll out i think it will be a basket once every two weeks but again i have to caution that it will be limited we're hoping by the end of next week right we're hoping by the end of next week and then of course that should take us up to about the third week of march so people may only be able to get a basket maybe two or three times um and we will do our best to make sure that we assist the poorest of our poor people because certainly everybody can get. Over 45,000 persons were beneficiaries of the previous pantry and food assistance program. 
They've been hired for, they've been here, that is, for 10 months, and now the Henry Reeves Cuban Medical Brigade is finally returning home. The 59 healthcare workers have been on the front lines since the very start of the pandemic, working alongside Belizean specialists, as well as personnel from the original medical brigade that has been in the country for years. Now, after months of helping Belize fight against the deadly virus, they will be reunited with their families. And while this may cause concern for our health system, which is already under stress, the, new, the good news is that another group of healthcare workers will be arriving tomorrow on the same flight that's taking the Henry Reeves Brigade back. Minister Councillor at the Cuban Embassy, Oreste Hernandez, said the professionals are more than grateful for the chance to assist Belize with whom they are celebrating 25 years of diplomatic relations. The first challenge is that they came and they left their loved one in Cuba. Uh, this pandemic has been a has been a a real challenge to the whole world. It's a new experience. It's a new disease. No vaccines. No any other uh, uh, backup that you can imagine. That if you got something, I mean, it's well known by the whole medical community. So uh, lift Cuba left the loved one behind with the same challenges that Felisa, Felisa has been facing, we've been facing that. So it been day, a day by day uh, task. Sometimes when you are not involved as a medical personnel, sometimes you can forget what you are supposed to. So they've been the vigilance with the Belizean peers to try to help the Belizean people not to get into a custom to different rules and different conditions. Uh, the other, uh, I mean, last week, Ambassador Perez, Cuban ambassador, had an Im important sessions of meetings with them by Zoom, with each of them in their in their in their communities in the place they are they are based, and it was interesting because what they were expressed, so they looked so natural, uh, talking about what they were facing, and sometimes it's dangerous. Because when you go to a community and then you began to do swaps and then you need to teach the community, which is the best way to avoid any kind of situation. So you are risking your life in the same flight that the, that the Henry will be leaving and returning to Cuba. They will be returning a group of another Cuban medical personnel that will be incorporated to the medical brigade. So the, 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 the it, it, it doesn't mean that we will leave Belize uh, 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 isolated. So another group will be coming to be part of the Cuban Medical Brigade. There will be coming another group of specialists and nurses and medical officers, I mean, medical practitioners, general medical practitioners, that will be incorporated to the front. This evening, we asked the acting DHS, Melissa Diaz, for her thoughts on the departing brigade. And she said that she's not worried since apart from the other brigade that's coming into the country, the Ministry of Health is also hiring more personnel in the form of community outreach technicians and medical laboratory technicians. These persons will assist with tasks such as target surveillance and swabbing in rural areas. She said, quote, hopefully a lot more persons to help with the COVID response. The Henry Reeves Brigade has been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize for the humanitarian work carried out by the Cuban health personnel in different parts of the world during the COVID-19 pandemic. The old Mirab building located on North Front Street belongs to the Public Utilities Commission and under the leadership of the former chairman, John Avery, the PUC has signed an agreement to pay 10.5 three million dollars for it it's in the news this week because the reports have emerged that the new chairman Dean Molina is considering a reversal of this deal but is it a legitimate purchase and did the PUC get value for money those are a few of the unanswered questions at this time but to get out in front of potential controversy Michael Bonara called an impromptu press conference to provide context to this sale of his company's old properties. 
It is under some scrutiny because at the time of the sale, Bonara was a sitting commissioner at the PUC. This evening at his office, Bonara invited members of the press to ask questions about this sale. Here's how that conversation went. The building was for sale for the past year or so. I was contacted by Mr. one of the directors from PUC about the building and we had a meeting, we spoke about it and that's when the negotiation started, probably a couple months prior to the contract. We had a meeting, I gave them the pricing that I'm interested in selling it at, it was um, agreed upon and they went back to their board, they had their meetings back and forth, we negotiated a few items and um, we agreed, that's how we had the agreement on December 5th. The uh, contract that, we, that I did with PUC was for $10.3 million. That what people didn't mention is that consists of the Mirab, the old Mirab building, and also another property next to the Belize Insurance Center. So um, the Mirab building is about 21, the old Mirab building is about 21,000 square feet. The uh, property sits on two lots with about 20,000 square feet of land. And then I have also the Belize Insurance, and a land next to Belize Insurance that was part of the deal. The 10.3 is for both the three properties together. The agreement was for a deposit of 1.8 million Belize dollars. Um, PUC had a property or had a, had a property on the George Price Highway that they were trying to sell. They mentioned to me that they're selling it for 1.5 million and that will be part of the down payment. I said, no problem. And back and forth negotiation, they keep telling me that it's coming, it's coming. It didn't come true. I offered to buy the property at a million dollars and um, they kept trying to sell it for like two months and they couldn't uh, get a buyer. Finally, they agreed to sell it to me as a deposit, as part of the deposit payment for a million. And a quick correction to that, it was not Mike Bonara that sat on the PUC board commission, but Pierre Bonara, his brother. As we told you last night, 19-year-old special needs resident of Belmopan, Walter Gonzalez, was fatally stabbed on Sunday night. He was taken to the Western Regional Hospital and then transferred to the KHMH after doctors were unable to stop his bleeding. Gonzalez would eventually become unresponsive and succumb to a stab wound. That wound was inflicted during a fight with his stepfather, 35-year-old Javier Chuck. Chuck allegedly stabbed the young man and took off on his bicycle with the weapon. Since then, his whereabouts remain unknown. This afternoon, police issued a wanted poster for Chuck. They asked that anyone with information that could lead to his capture contact their nearest police station by calling 911 or one of the other numbers listed on the poster. Belize's first funeral for a head of state. Our coverage continues on the second day of mourning when we return. Don't go away. Looking for a paint which offers durability, fast drying action, easy application, long lasting protection and low order? Then Coronado is the brand you need. Choose from eggshell flat or semi-gloss finishes for your home's interior or exterior. You can also protect your deck from the harsh outdoor elements with Coronado Maxum deck and siding stain. We also have primers, masonry and metal coatings for other projects around your home. Benny's Paint Center has the paint you need in the color and finish you want. Enjoy your newly painted home with long-lasting, durable Coronado paints. Available at Benny's. Quality and savings.
Belkin, the beer of Belize. Caused the intense flooding overnight in the western and Babe. southern parts of the country. Uh, yeah. Do we need to renew the insurance policy? The insurance policy. Oh, let me check. Renew your policies, file a claim, and even send us a message using RFNG online. Now we're good. It says we're covered. Okay, great. It pays to get it right. RFNG Insurance, a rogue group company. If you have been directly exposed to the new coronavirus or have a history of travel in infected populated areas, it is recommended that you self-isolate. Identify room to be used to self-isolate and limit contact with healthy persons. Keep away from older persons and persons who have medical conditions that affects their immune system. Monitor for any cold or flu-like symptom for up to 21 days and wash hands frequently with soap and water. If you become seriously ill, call your healthcare provider or 0800-664-2273 for guidance. A health and wellness message from your Ministry of Health. In partnership with the British High Commission. Contraband is the illegal importation of goods such as alcohol, tobacco, foods, and parts. Apart from breaking the law, smugglers are also now endangering the health of all Belizeans. They risk bringing coronavirus into Belize with their contraband. To keep COVID-19 out of Belize, everyone entering the country is screened and quarantined. But contraband smugglers are not using legal entry points and are bypassing all safety measures. And these same smugglers are moving among the population. They could be carrying the virus. By coming into the country illegally, they could cause outbreaks of COVID-19. Buying or smuggling contraband is putting yourself, your family, and the entire country at risk. Report smuggling. For smart, call 0800 Jumpers or 0800 Borders. For Digi, 0800 Save BZE. This message is brought to you by the Belize Police Department and the Belize Bank. Contrabando es importar ilegalmente productos como el alcohol, tabaco, comida y objetos. Aparte de romper la ley, los contrabandistas están poniendo ahora en riesgo la salud de los beliceños. Ellos arriesgan traer coronavirus a Belice por medio de sus contrabandos. Para mantener el COVID-19 fuera de Belice, todos los que entren al país son examinados y encuarentenados. Sin embargo, los contrabandistas no utilizan los puntos de entrada legal y se saltan todas las medidas de seguridad. Estos mismos traficantes se están moviendo entre la población. Ellos podrían tener el virus. Al entrar ilícitamente al país, esto puede provocar un brote de COVID-19. Comprar o traficar contrabando te pone a ti, a tu familia y a todo tu país en riesgo. Para números de Smart, llama al 0800-586-7377, 0800-267-3377 y para Digi, 0800-728-3293 para reportar cualquier actividad de contrabando. Este mensaje es presentado por el Departamento de Policía de Belice y el Banco de Belice. you have a neighbor throwing a party? Do you know of anyone holding a social event? Have you seen people not following protocols set in place to reduce the spread of COVID-19? If so, report them immediately. Use SMART or BTL and call 0800 PARTIES. That's 0800-727-8432. Our COVID-19 hotlines are available 24-7. These violators are putting your health and everyone you love at risk. Call our COVID-19 hotlines and report all violators. This message was brought to you by the Belize Police Department.
illegal and puts our entire nation at risk. Our neighbors, Guatemala and Mexico, are experiencing rapidly increasing numbers of COVID-19 cases, and there are more deaths every day. Persons entering Belize illegally from these hotspot countries are not being tested for COVID-19. That's why it is important to report anyone entering Belize illegally by calling our hotlines. Smart users call 0800-JUMPERS or 0800-BORDERS. For Digi, call 0800-SAVE-BZE. Condoning or engaging in border jumping is putting yourself, your family, and the entire country at risk. Remember, anyone caught will be fined up to $5,000 and or imprisoned for two years. Stop border jumping now. This message is brought to you by the Belize Police Department and the Belize Bank. y México han experimentado un rápido incremento de casos de contagio de COVID-19 y hay más muertes cada día. Personas entrando a Belice ilegalmente, viniendo de esos países con múltiples casos, no les están haciendo las pruebas de COVID-19. Es por eso que es importante reportar a cualquiera que entre ilegalmente a Belice llamando a nuestras líneas directas. Para Smart, marque 0800 586-7377, 0800-267-3377 y para Digi, marque 0800-728-3293. Tolerar o participar en entrar ilegalmente es ponerte a ti, a tu familia y a todo tu país en riesgo. Recuerda, cualquiera que sea arrestado deberá pagar una multa de hasta 5 mil y o prisión por dos años. Detén el salto de fronteras hoy. Este mensaje es presentado por el Departamento de Policía de Belice y el Banco de Belice. Yesterday, we took you to the PGIA for the arrival of the remains of the late Dr. Dame Menita Gordon. It was a somber occasion, with the coffin, which was draped in the Belizean flag, received by the current Governor General, the Prime Minister, and the Leader of the Opposition. The ceremonies continued today, as the remains of Dame Menita was paraded on Albert Street and laid in state at the Belize City House of Culture. And even as the skies seemed to join in the morning, soaking BDF soldiers, Cherie Salsal made her way to the viewing ceremony. Here's that story. The rain didn't stop them. It was their duty. And in that spirit, a bearer party of BDF soldiers marched up Albert Street and around St. John's Anglican Cathedral. The cortege proceeded through the pelting rain up to the gates of the House of Culture, up the steps, and into the former state dining room of Dame Minita's former residence, where she now lies in state. And with a violin quartet providing a hauntingly beautiful ambiance, Dr. Dame Elmira Minita Gordon, the first woman in the Commonwealth to rise to the rank of Governor General, rested upon a cattle falc covered by a black pall. Here, she was paid last respects by some of the country's highest ranking officials, among them women, for whom she helped to pave the way. One of my fondest memories of her is when she used to walk down with a nice big, big handbag over her, over her elbow, you know, her right arm, and she wore bright, bright colors and a big, a big broad, broad brim hat. And she would go about her business quietly, but with the kind of dignity that I believe in Belize we need to emulate today. This morning's ceremony was a stately and ceremonious event with government and municipal leaders, opposition members, the teachers union leader, and the most important guests, the late Governor General's siblings. Her sister and caretaker in her last years, Kelora Franklin, spoke to us and shared some of what gave Damonita her drive. 
She had a heart of gold. I, Deminita was the eldest of a family of uh, six children. She was kind, loving, caring, and she was also a mentor for the rest of us. With her motivation and the drive she had to excel, she passed that on to us. And we also had that drive to do our best and to excel. Whatever we needed to do, we could look to her to motivate us, to advise us, and to do whatever deemed necessary to make sure that we were successful. I remember kissing her every day and telling her how much I love her. And I told her, thank you for being my sister, for being my mentor, for being my teacher, and for being my friend. And because I told her I loved her every day, several times during the day, one day, because she did have a sense of humor, and so one day when I said, I love you, sister, and then I would call her Sister Dame, I love you, and she would say, don't I know it. <laughs> My sister adapted the motto, aim high, aim high, and she had that written on all of her books, aim high, and that's what she did. So as she went through her education, she didn't stop until she got her PhD. And whatever she did, it was always her best. She was very involved in Girl Scouts until she rose to the position of a commissioner. Also the Red Cross. And she opened several links of Red Cross. Whatever she was involved in, she made sure that it was her best efforts. And Damonita's best efforts were far from selfish. She held a firm belief in advancement through education and made a point of paying it forward. And those who couldn't afford it, my sister would give scholarships for them to go to high school. Not only pay for tuition, but those who needed books or clothing, she would supply those so that the young people could get an education. An extraordinary woman with a gracious heart, who today was honored with all of the pomp and ceremony befitting her station and her singularity, a black Belizean woman, head of state in 1981. My family would have been proud. And my brother and I, we represent the family and we are proud. And I was reminiscing about the things I heard she did in Belize and some of the things that I participated in. For example, when the Queen visited Belize in 1985, I flew to Belize and I participated in, in all the activities. I just felt thankful to God and thrilled that someone who was my sister had given so much of herself, first to God, family, and the country. She was with me for the last four years of her life. And I heard her pray for the children of Belize. I would hear her saying, God, please bless the children of Belize. God, please bless Belize. Not just one time, but over and over, even though she was now getting down. But she didn't just pray for herself. She prayed for Belize and she prayed for the children and the people of Belize. And that touched me. She loved her country dearly. And uh, I'm just very, very proud of my sister. And I'm thankful that I was a part of her life. She was a part of my life. She was a part of all our lives. Cherise Halso, 7 News. Dr. Day Manita Gordon's remains departed the House of Culture at 2 p.m. to return to Coy's funeral home to prepare for the culmination event, tomorrow's state funeral. 
And tomorrow, church bells across Belize will toll ahead of that major event. Those funeral services will be held at 10 a.m. at St. John's Cathedral on Regent Street. Due to COVID restrictions, it will not be open to the public, but the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition will give official remembrances, while a family member will deliver the eulogy. And even though public officers will have to pay their respects from afar, approval for the midday closure of government offices has been approved on Wednesday, January 20th, as a mark of respect for Belize's first head of state. You can see it live here on Channel 7. And while the public officers get a half day like everyone else, they will need to be in their homes by 8 p.m. That's because the curfew that was enacted back in November is still ongoing. It's end indeterminate. That's what the UDP pointed out in their press release issued on Friday. They claim that the curfew is arguably unconstitutional and also added that it is inconsiderate of business owners and workers who normally operate outside of curfew hours. They are now calling on the government to revisit the protocols in place, but they are not the only ones. Some in the public are also calling for, at the very least, some fixed and date to the curfew. While everyone is undoubtedly affected, those in San Pedro who rely mostly on tourism's service industry to put food on their table are on edge. Their businesses cannot operate when the few tourists who come into the country cannot even eat at a restaurant with their children at night. As such, the Minister of Health, Michel Shabbat, along with the area rep, Andre Perez, will be on Reef Radio tomorrow morning addressing the concerns of a wary public. And as it relates to the actual protocols, Minister of Home Affairs and New Growth Industries, Karim Musa, wrote in a Facebook comment, quote, we are currently reviewing the protocols and the new measures would likely come into effect towards the end of the month, end quote. Orange Walk Town Councillor Harish Vaswani, he became both famous and infamous in the last three years. Famous as the first Indian Belizean to be elected to public office and then infamous for his partying exploits which landed him with a conviction for moving around after curfew hours in 2020. And then, video later emerged alleging that he and friends were partying with abandon during the lockdown. He disputed the dates of those videos and got off with only a two-hour suspension from his council duties. But it seems those antics did not endear him to his fellow councillors, including new nominee for mayor Ladrick Madbul Shepherd. Much to his surprise, Vaswani was left off the PUP slate this time around after he claims he had been initially told that he would be included. Vaswani declined an interview today but said via text that his people will be staying home for this election. We note that Orange Walk has a large Indian community. Vaswani says they lost a powerful PUP, but I will always be a PUP, but will not vote. End quote. Last weekend, Guatemalan security forces had to use sticks and tear gas to repel a large migrant caravan of Central Americans who were trying to reach the United States. Thousands of migrants, including families with young children, had reportedly entered Guatemala since last Friday. Press reports say that they were mostly Honduran asylum seekers who were fleeing poverty and violence in Central America that has been severely impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. They are also fleeing the aftermath of the devastating hurricanes Eta and Iota, which tore through Central America more mere weeks before the end of the last hurricane season. These migrants reportedly left on foot last Thursday from San Pedro Sula. Several thousand migrants made it all the way to the Guatemalan village of Vado Hondo, which is about 35 miles away from the borders of Honduras and El Salvador, and about 155 miles from Jalacte in the Toledo district. That's where they were met with strong resistance from a large number of Guatemalan security officers. Video footage captured of the scuffles between the two sides shows the migrants trying to brute force their way past Guatemalan soldiers and police officers who were armed with tear gas, riot shields and sticks. After scuffles with the security forces, 21 of those migrants sought medical attention at nearby health centers and they tested positive for COVID-19. 
The Guatemalan authorities said that on Sunday they deported nearly a thousand members of the caravan. Buses and trucks were made available for those who wanted to voluntarily return home. And tonight we can report that the majority of this caravan has dissipated with 2,300 of the migrants choosing to return to their hometowns on the buses. Others have been deterred by a series of strategically placed roadblocks where forces deployed tear gas and used batons to dissolve the mass of people. We reached out to Belize's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Eamon Courtney, for comment, and he told us to, quote, the caravan is being monitored closely by Belizean authorities. We are in contact with the relevant counterparts for intelligence purposes. The travelers were hoping for a more welcoming reception from the U.S. President-elect Joe Biden, who will be inaugurated tomorrow. But Biden has gone on record to publicly urge them to turn back. We'll take our second break now. We'll have more news when we come back. Don't go away. Looking for a paint which offers durability, fast drying action, easy application, long lasting protection, and low order? Then Coronado is the brand you need. Choose from eggshell, flat, or semi gloss finishes for your home's interior or exterior. You can also protect your deck from the harsh outdoor elements with Coronado Maxum deck and siding stain. We also have primers, masonry and metal coatings for other projects around your home. Benny's Paint Center has the paint you need in the color and finish you want. Enjoy your newly painted home with long-lasting, durable Coronado paints. Available at Benny's. Quality and savings. For hydration, when the choice is yours, choose the brand you have always trusted. Crystal water, taste you can trust. If you have been directly exposed to the new coronavirus or have a history of travel in infected populated areas, it is recommended that you self-isolate. Identify room to be used to self-isolate and limit contact with healthy persons. Keep away from older persons and persons who have medical conditions that affects their immune system. Monitor for any cold or flu-like symptom for up to 21 days and wash hands frequently with soap and water. If you become seriously ill, call your healthcare provider or 0800-664-2273 for guidance. A health and wellness message from your Ministry of Health. In partnership with the British High Commission. Electricity. We use it to power our appliances, charge our devices, and light our home. Let's all practice energy conservation at home and in the workplace. That's unplug chargers when not in use, lights off when not in the room, turn off fans and TVs. You can also look for Energy Star products and change lights to LEDs, which reduce energy cost. Let's all save energy. You have a neighbor throwing a party? Do you know of anyone holding a social event? Have you seen people not following protocols set in place to reduce the spread of COVID-19? If so, report them immediately. Use Smart or BTL and call 0800 Parties. That's 0800 727 8432. Our COVID 19 hotlines are available 24 7. These violators are putting your health and everyone you love at risk. Call our COVID 19 hotlines and report all violators. This message was brought to you by the Belize Police Department.
Belize collects data for the compilation of Belize's balance of payments. In order to carry out this exercise for 2020 and to make revisions to our 2019 data, the bank is once again conducting its survey of business enterprises and non-profit organizations resident in Belize. The bank guarantees that all information submitted will be kept strictly confidential and any published statistics will be aggregated so that individual enterprises cannot be identified. To contribute to the effectiveness of this exercise, please submit responses by Friday, the 29th of January, 2021. The Central Bank of Belize takes this opportunity to thank all those who participated in the survey and looks forward to your continued cooperation. Early in the news, you saw Mirab owner Mike Bonara explaining how he sold his old Mirab building and other properties to the Public Utilities Commission for $10.3 million. We have a little more from that interview in which he took on tough questions about his asking price and about concerns that there was a conflict of interest. His brother Pierre was a sitting member of the commissioner back in the December 2019 when the deal was first struck. But he told the media today that his brother was not in any way involved in it. Here are those parts of the conversation. My brother Pierre had nothing to do with the negotiation. He was actually not involved. I'm the CEO of the company and uh, I met with Mr. Kiman Obaro and the chairman of uh, the PUC, Mr. Avery, and we started the negotiations. Was your family member in any way interacted with this particular sale? Giving any sort of contacts, any, any any sort of connections to the people you met with? Not as far as I'm concerned. I know he was not involved in any of it. Did the government overpay for an asset that is not worth as much as the agreement that was signed for it? Definitely not, because if we calculate in its general terms, the building is 21,000 square feet. A building with that quality is construction at the moment now at this time is anywhere between 250 and 500 a square foot and that's public knowledge something with that quality let's take an average of 350 dollars per square foot that puts it at seven million and seven seven million three hundred fifty thousand for the building just to construct at in today's market what happened to the property that it sits on that's one of the best properties in that area luxurious area it sits on two properties twenty thousand square feet 
at $2 million for the property, that's 9.3, which, and the other property is worth a $1 million, so that's 10.3, that's how where the figure came from. We have reached out to Dean Molina, the new chairman of the PUC, for comment, but up to news time, we have not received a response. We also contacted Kimana Barrow, the former PUC commissioner, who Bonaro named as one of the contact persons for his sale. He declined comments, saying that he is no longer at the commission. Last week, we brought you the story of a woman from the South who survived an assault at the hands of her common-law husband. The images of her disfigured face after her attacker hit her repeatedly with a hammer sparked outrage on social media. The Minister of Human Development and Families issued a press release on the incident, saying that while they cannot issue a statement on every report of domestic violence, they were compelled to do so in this instance. The Minister, Dolores Balderamas Garcia, reiterated those sentiments today. It really saddens my heart, but it is a constant, constant struggle. And it is a struggle that never ends. Um, it seems that almost, it, almost anything that we do is, all, is never enough. But it is something that we must never take our focus away from because we continue to see the abuse of women and children and families on a whole, you know? And so I just want to say that we, we appeal to the Belizean people, our families, men, um, older people, everybody. Let's respect one another and cherish one another because with these COVID times, a lot of people are under pressure and somebody might tend to lash out. And so um, we have to be here and ready and responsive to maybe children who are being um, neglected or abused and also elderly people. We don't want to forget that. But I just want to say um, on behalf of our ministry, because we have, we have tremendous support from all our workers in the Women and Family Department, in the Community Rehab Department, and also in the Human Services Department. There is a lot of focus now on assisting families and children at a time like this. But of course, the message has to be that we must never ever take our eyes off of this um, intractable problem, if I could put it that way, um, because it's for all of us. We're all in this together and we have to signal. We can't make a statement each and every time someone is abused, but it is a problem that we must never ever forget and there must be a zero tolerance attitude. The perpetrator, Joel Bardales, was remanded at the Belize Central Prison. Another domestic case was in court today. Earlier in the news, we told you about a stepson who was murdered by his stepfather while trying to come to his mother's defense. Today, in a similar scenario with a much less tragic ending, another stepfather, 53-year-old Rudolph Dawson, was arraigned on three counts of common assault, one count of using insulting words upon his wife, Jolene O'Brien Dawson, and one count of harm against her son, Tyrone Lino, in an incident that he called Wan Lee Misunderstanding. Dawson claims that it was during that little misunderstanding that Lino attacked him with a fork, and with his hands still allegedly around his wife's neck, Dawson also allegedly took hold of Lino's hand, twisting it upward in an attempt to ward him off. Today, he admitted that the action was wrong, but told the court that he'd attempted to discipline the young man according to his biological father's wishes. He also promised the court that there won't be a repeat of the incident, saying that upon leaving custody, he plans to move out of the house and back in with his grandmother. Magistrate Gillett considered Dawson a first-time offender and imposed a fine totaling $1,015. He has until March 31st, 2020 to pay, 2021 that is, to pay $310 of that fine and until April 1st, 2021 to pay the larger part of the fine. In the fault of that fine, Dawson could spend a total of eight months in jail. One new COVID death has been reported in the last 24 hours. There are 23 new confirmed cases out of 217 tests for a daily positivity rate of less than 10%. Last night, we showed you the ceremonial opening of the Supreme Court, an event which takes place every year on the second Monday in January. This year, the event was different because it had to take place virtually due to public health risks caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. 
The acting Chief Justice Michelle Arana was particularly candid about the problems facing the justice system and how gaps in resources caused by a lack of funding has impacted its performance and efficiency. In her remarks at the opening ceremony, she also shared a few thoughts on her ascent to this high judicial office. Here's what she had to say about being the first female Chief Justice. I am truly grateful to the former Prime Minister, Honorable Dean Barrow, and the current Prime Minister, Honorable John Brisenia, then Leader of the Opposition, for supporting my appointment as Acting Chief Justice of Belize. It is an appointment which holds great historical significance to many for myriad reasons, including, to name a few, celebration of the fact that I am the very first female to hold this high judicial office in Belize. I am a black person of Garifuna ethnicity, one of the most marginalized ethnic groups who have been systematically oppressed in our society and indeed the region. And I am one of a small handful of native Belizeans who have ever been appointed as Chief Justice in a long line of Chief Justices since 1843, including Sir Albert Stein, Sir George Brown, Sir Manuel Sosa, Honorable Justice Traudio Gonzalez, and Honorable Justice George Singh. Several weeks ago, Justice of Appeal Minette Hafiz Betram was appointed as acting president of the Court of Appeal. She is also the first woman to hold that office. And that's all we have for you for tonight. Thanks for watching. With your news, I'm Indora Craig. Remember that you can see a streaming video of this newscast at 7 brought to you by Digi for the best postpaid plans in the country. Remember now to wash your hands, to wear masks at all times in public, and to keep your social distance. But we start today, tonight, so please stay inside. I'll be back here tomorrow at 6, and until then, have a good night.